It's a lot easier to say the true portion of a story. That's the problem. See, if you're hiding in plain sight, people are more likely to believe you. People want to believe you. The history of lying. Hello, class. Welcome to the fourth lecture on how we lie. First, thank you so much for your field notes on the Liars Club's ticks and tells. You guys have sharp eyes. You caught some uh, moments of distress that even I missed. And how many of you started wondering whether others were cataloging your various gestures? I definitely have. But that's the problem with being aware of the power of scrutiny. I mean, the professor and I, we're not actually behind a one-way mirror. Our scrutiny is reflected back on us tenfold, particularly with Cuff. I mean, it's a big claim to make. Every product that ended up in the Museum of Failure had backers once and geniuses who pioneered them. But let's set aside internal anxieties and sink our teeth into some hearty lies. We know why we lie. We've seen what it looks like when we lie. But how do we lie? Now, I can imagine most of you said something along the lines of, with our mouths. Don't try to be funny. All right, so maybe it's better to ask what kind of lies do we tell? When we swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, that is the way that our justice system covers its bases. See, all lies fall into three categories. Lies of commission, lies of omission, and lies of influence. To tell the truth, that vow is designed to omit lies of commission. See, lies of commission are straightforward, bold-faced lies. If you had said, I was nowhere near the scene of the crime, Your Honor, but there was video footage of you at the scene of the crime, that would be a direct lie. The whole truth covers lies of omission. Lies of omission are created when you leave out certain details in a story that don't benefit you. If you say that I was at the scene of the crime, but you leave out the fact that you were murdering someone, that would be a lie of omission. And nothing but the truth that protects from lies of influence. Lies of influence are statements meant to influence our perception of events and change our point of view. They're particularly dangerous because they don't seem like lies. Saying, I'm a good person and I volunteer at the Animal Rescue Society, I can't believe you accuse me of murder, is a lie of influence. You hope to change people's opinions of you and make them sympathize with you. You'll find these lies most often in the wild. Most people aren't 100% comfortable telling a direct lie. Like we discussed in the last session, untruths make people uncomfortable. It's a lot easier to say the true portion of a story. That's the problem. See, if you're hiding in plain sight, people are more likely to believe you. People want to believe you. Now, these last two categories in particular have a lot of subgenres. Most of these have to do with turning the conversation away from the facts and trying to influence people's opinions of the liar. So, what are some of the examples of these kinds of lies in history? Again, most of history. But let's grab some specific examples. Who knows the story of Julius Caesar? Just review. Julius Caesar was a very popular senator in the Republic of Rome. Too popular. The other Senators thought it was likely he would become king, a tyrant. Uh, so they conspired to kill him. Worse, they convinced his friend Brutus that Julius had to die. So Julius mutters his famous last words, et tu Brute. Then Brutus makes a huge mistake. He decides to trust Julius Caesar's son, Mark Antony. And Mark Antony tells the conspirators that he wants to present Caesar's body to the citizens of Rome as their friend. Friends, I am with you all and love you all. That's a lie of commission. A bald-faced lie. Then Mark Anthony appears before the citizens. He declares, I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. That's a lie of omission. He will not overtly praise Caesar, but Mark Antony spends the rest of the speech listing Caesar's best qualities while apparently uh, dismissing them. Then, 
Mark Antony uses a lie of influence to destroy Brutus' reputation. Brutus continued to refer back to his honor as his motivation. Killing Caesar wasn't a crime because it was honorable. Well, then Mark Antony says, Oh, masters, if I were disposed to stir your hearts and minds to mutiny and rage, I should do Brutus wrong, who you all know is an honorable man. So, with that turn of speech, he has influenced the crowd. They have turned against their conspirators, and the Civil War is underway. Oh. oh, damn. I'm afraid, unfortunately, that I'm gonna have to cut today's class short. I have to run and help Moynihan set up for the interview. <clears throat> um, for your homework this week, I'd like you to write a short paragraph or create a video. Think carefully about your use of lies of influence. You might be surprised to find out how often you dodge the truth. As usual, if you're careful, I'll make sure to reward you for your efforts. Watching closely.